welcome back my friends here on will edutech nice having you now in this video we're going to be looking at the solution for question 5b which usually falls under the general topic of geometry on the syllabus however to be more specific uh, this is a transformation question okay and this question was taken from the csec math exam pass paper january 2012 and it falls in section one now quickly let's pull this up and get into it Question states the diagram below shows a triangle PQR and its image P prime Q prime R prime and here we have it on our Cartesian plane or you if another name for Cartesian plane is your graph leaf okay now here we have the object PQR and its corresponding image P prime Q prime R prime now in part one they're asking us to state the coordinates of P and Q and that's an easy two marks. Now we would have learned from earlier lessons that when we're writing a coordinate, okay, so this is part one. So the coordinate for P when writing a coordinate it's in the form X comma Y, okay, where you write the X value first separated by a comma followed by the Y value. Now what do we mean by that? Let's just quickly look at it. Now since I want the coordinate for P I am going to position myself at the point P and if you notice I've positioned myself here okay my friends then I am going to go down on my x-axis first to read off that value so let's do that I'm coming down from P to touch my x-axis and if you notice I came down at the point 2 on my x-axis okay so basically I can just fill in the blanks quickly so this implies that the coordinate for P open bracket my x value is 2 so now I need to find my what corresponding y value but first before we find the y value there's something important about the scale on our uh, Cartesian plane or x-axis and our y-axis that we must take note of right if you notice here at the origin this point where the y-axis intersects or meet the x-axis is called the origin the point of intersection okay my friends now if you notice on my x-axis I, I if I start from the origin if you notice what they did they skip out a unit and then we have a 2 here then this another unit is skipped out and then we have a 4 there so we must determine how many units we are going up by how many centimeters per unit we are going up by okay my friends now if you notice from 0 to to the first to the first graduation here that would be one centimeter then we would have a two then a three centimeters then a four five six seven so we're going up on the x-axis we're increasing one centimeter to one unit so likewise we need to check on our x-axis uh, how many centimeters we're increasing Per unit here again it's a similar situation if I should start at the origin the first one you notice we don't have a number there then the second one we have a two and then we skip out another one and then we have a four so obviously again it's the same thing we're increasing by one centimeter to one unit on our y-axis so here I have a zero then I would have a one here a two three four and so on so you have to be mindful of these little things in the exam because uh, if not you you may make an error okay my friends now quickly let's get back into it uh, let's find the the y value for P now let me just change my color a bit now my P value if I want I would have to I would have to locate myself or go back to the point P on my Cartesian plane which is this point and then I would have to go over or go across on my y-axis okay my friends like what I'm doing there and if you notice the point here on my y-axis that point would be positive one alright based on what we have just explained so for P my y value I would have a positive one so there you go that that would be my coordinate that's my answer okay my friends so the point P is that the well the point P is located at the coordinate 2 1 all right where 2 is the X value 1 is the Y value let's quickly move on and let's find the point Q so Q again it's the same procedure it's X Y that's a general form how you label a coordinate all right so or write a coordinate so my Q first I have to find my X value so let's go again same process 
we're going to be going through. So from Q, I'm coming down on my y-axis. And if you notice, when I came down on my y-axis from the point Q, uh, my x-axis rather, my bad, uh, I came down on the point 4. So I now need to go across from Q on my y-axis. Now if you notice, on this horizontal line here from Q going across to my left to touch my y-axis, I would fall exactly in the middle of 2 and 4. So if I fall there, obviously, well, this point would be a 3. Okay, my friends, let me just change the color. So obviously here would be a 3. So that point there would be a 3. If, I, if I'm coming across from Q, hope you're seeing that, straight to my y-axis. So my y-value for Q would be a 3. All right, let me just change the color quickly and put that in. So there we go. There we have it. Our coordinate P is 2, 1 and our coordinate Q is 4, 3. And that's my answer. Now in part 2, they are now asking us to describe fully the transformation that maps triangle PQR onto triangle P prime, Q prime, R prime, which is its image, okay? Now, well, obviously I can just look at it and tell you that it's a reflection in the x-axis, but first, let's just look at the concept behind it. Let's see how we can prove that it's, it's really a reflection, okay, my friends? Now, there are a few characteristics of a reflection that we have to bear in mind, okay? And um, pretty much... If you are at home, you could always look in the mirror. Let's say we had a mirror here, for example. Just let's let's quickly, this is part two I'm working on, but let's just look at the characteristics of a reflection. Let's say I had a mirror and I'm not too artistic, so please do not mock my drawing. Okay, let's say we had a mirror there. So that's my mirror, okay? Let me just put in two strokes to suggest my sheen, okay? That's my mirror. Let's say you were looking in the mirror. Okay, and you are standing on this side. So I'm just going to put an M for mirror. Okay, this is our mirror. And let's say you are here looking in the mirror before you go to work. Okay, just, just looking in the mirror to see how you were, you were looking. All right, then when you look in the mirror, your reflection would obviously be on the opposite side inside the mirror okay so this is your what we call your image okay my friends that would be your image looking back at you now there are some characteristics notice when you look in a mirror okay your image or the reflection uh, of yourself is looking back at you okay so number one characteristic of a reflection is that object and image are facing each other okay so that's one object and image face each other each other okay that's one characteristic number two okay and if you notice if you look at the triangle and let's just look at this if you look at triangle PRQ okay and or PQR rather and if you look at its image P prime Q prime R prime if you look at it carefully if it's reflected in the x-axis if you notice object and image are facing each other okay my friends so if the x-axis is the mirror line um, object and image would be looking at each other all right good another characteristics that we need to bear in mind quickly uh, object and image are the same distance away from the mirror line okay so if you check this out this would be let me call this this is you and another name for you is the object okay object and this is your reflection and another name for the reflection is image okay so that's what we refer to as the image now if you notice if you are if you are standing let's say just for argument's sake you are standing 20 20 centimeters away from the mirror line let's say you are standing 20 20 cm from the mirror line okay or from the mirror then obviously your image will be also standing 20 centimeters away from the mirror line okay your image also would be standing 20 cm okay so what do we say we are simply saying that under a reflection object and image are the same distance apart from the mirror line okay my friends so 
before we can fully describe, we um, have to establish these characteristics to ensure that it is a reflection. Okay, my friends, hope this little exercise was helpful. So let's quickly get back into it to see if object and image are the same distance apart. Now, if I should take the point P, if you notice, P is one unit away from the x-axis. Okay, my friends? And if I should go over to the point P prime and check it, P prime is one unit away also from my x-axis. Likewise, if I should go to my object point Q and let's check, this would be one, two, three. So the point Q on, on the object is three units away from the mirror line, which is the x-axis. So let's check on Q prime. The point Q prime is also one, two, three units away from the mirror lines. Now, my friends, since we have established these two important pieces of characteristics, we can then simply state now that our transformation that maps PQR onto its image P prime, Q prime, R prime is a reflection in the x axis. I must advise you, however, they are more characteristic to a, ref to a reflection rather. However, we're not going to get into it now. You could always check out our playlist, which will be coming soon, on, on transformation where, you know, we teach the basic concepts there. All right. Now, quickly. So there we have it, my friends. Let's describe our transformation. As I've stated it here, triangle PQR is mapped onto its image P prime, Q prime, R prime by a reflection in the X axis. So when describing a reflection, the important piece of information after you have stated that it is a reflection to state is your mirror line. And in this case, the X axis uh, was our mirror line because it's the X axis that the triangle PQR was reflected into. All right. So that's it for part two. Now in part three, they're asking us to write down the coordinates of the images of P and Q under the translation three negative two. Now this is pretty easy. A easy two marks again, my friends. Now, basically, what is happening here? This can be worked out two ways. We can work, work this out geometrically on the Cartesian plane, or we can calculate it algebraically by using the matrix, okay? Now, let's just calculate it algebraically quickly. I'm just going to pull this up a bit so that we can have a little bit more space to work with, okay, my friends? Oh, I think that should be good. Now, given the fact that in part one, we found the coordinate for P, okay? There's just a little a little formula that I would like to introduce you to that object my object let me just change the color object part and this is part three I'm working on object plus my translation is equal to my image okay now since they're asking us for the points P and Q let me change the color they want us to find the points we are going to be translating rather the point P and Q under the vector T equal three negative six. Now, let me just highlight something very important. In the translation vector, this vector that we have here in the matrix form three negative six, the, the value at the top, this three here is the X value. Okay, and that X value represents the horizontal shift from right to left. Now, if X is positive, as in this case, we'll be moving to the right. However, if it was negative, we would be moving to the left on the X axis. Now, this value at the bottom represents our Y movement. OK, so the negative six here, any number that is at the bottom in a translation vector represents the Y movement. Now, if Y is positive, we would be moving in an upward direction, okay? But since it is negative, we're gonna be moving in a downward direction. So quickly, the object point P, since we found the coordinate for P, P, we got two, one. So now, since we are going to be uh, calculating it, in, we have to write it in vector form. So instead of saying 2, 1, I'm just going to put my x value at the top and then I put my y value at the bottom. Okay, so my object point for P, and I'm just going to state it there, P open bracket, and I'm writing this coordinate now in, I'm writing my coordinate for P that I found in part one up top here. Okay, I'm going to write it in vector form to calculate it. Now, this is it. I have 
a 2, remember the x value goes at the top, so I have a 2 and the y value goes at the bottom, that's 1. So that's my object point, okay? And I'm adding to that my translation. And they gave us the translation to be 3, negative 6, okay? So all I'm just going to be doing here, I have two matrix of the same order, so I'm just going to calculate my matrix now, my friends. So I'm just saying 2 plus 3, remember corresponding values, we can just add them when we're adding or subtracting matrix. So I can say 2 plus 3 would give me 5, okay? And 1 plus negative 6, I'm saying one, my, one, 1 is being added to negative 6, so that would leave us with a negative 5, okay? So this would be my image point. So basically, this would be my P, I'm, I'm just going to call this P double prime, okay? So remember now, this is in vector form, and they had asked us to write down the coordinate, and I'm underlining it there, the coordinates of the image. So we would have to write our coordinate for P double prime in coordinate form now. So I have to say 5. Since the 5 is at the top, that would be my x value. And I'm going to put the negative 5 at the bottom, okay, at, as my y value. So that's my x value and that's my y value. Now quickly, for part 2, we had gotten Q for 4, 3, okay? So let's just pull this up a bit so that we can have a little bit more space to work with, okay? No, I think that's pretty good. Now we've gotten the coordinate Q for as 4, 3. So again, it's the same procedure. I'm just going to say my coordinate. Let me just change this quickly. My coordinate Q. Q, the object, was 4, 3. So we have a 4 over a 3 right there. And I'm just simply adding to that my translation vector, which is again 3, negative 6. So I have a 3 up top, negative 6 down the bottom, okay? And I'm going to say that must be equal to 4 plus 3. That would give me a 7. And 3 plus negative 6, that would give me a negative 3, okay? And remember now, this is Q, and I'm going to call this Q double prime okay and that's my image however remember this is in vector form we have to write it because they ask us for coordinates we have to write it in coordinate form so my coordinate my coordinate q double prime would that would be seven remember the value at the top is the x value comma negative three okay my friends well my friends that's it it's pretty much that easy uh just to re-emphasize that whenever you calculate a point and you're finding a coordinate point you should always write back your answer in coordinate form okay take it from the vector form and write it back in coordinate form where we have a x y value now in the next video i'll be working out part three i'm going to be showing you a different method used to work to calculate part three. I'm going to be working that out on the Cartesian plane, okay? Um, so that you can be better equipped any way you prefer using to calculate under translation an object point and its corresponding image point. Now, hopefully this has helped you uh, in your exams preparation. So feel free to subscribe to this channel.